Oh, yeah, we got email. All right, let's go right on. This viewer says, is saying the sinner's prayer more than once showing a lack of faith? Not really. Uh, you want to reaffirm your commitment to the Lord, but look, there, there are people who get saved a hundred times. They, they figure they get saved, and they're out of saved, and then they're saved back again, and then they get out of saved, and then they're saved again. No, no. When you come to the Lord, it's for keeps. It's like I've been adopted into the family of God mm -hmm. once, you know, in that he died, he died once. So don't keep finding the Lord. Don't keep getting saved. Don't keep going forward at meetings. No, you don't want to do that. You want to say, I'm, I'm a child of God and I'm going to live that way. Okay. All right. Rachel says, what happens if I don't come to a point where I obey God 100%? <laughs> I wonder what's going on in that child's life. I think mm -hmm. I get a feeling that, you know, she's having some relationship that she's a little ashamed of and she's, mm -hmm. she keeps saying yes when she knows she should say no. And uh, uh, look, only God knows what's in your heart. But the truth is we want to do everything we can to please him. And uh, I, I think that's where our uh, thrust should be is I want to please God. Hmm. And uh, let's leave it at that. Amen. All right. Grace writes, I feel that I'm not always sorry enough for my sins or can even remember all of them. Does that mean the Lord doesn't forgive me? How do I get so I'm truly sorry and hate my sins? Um, Her name is Grace, too. Grace, take it. You know, un that's unmerited favor. You know, they had a group of people in the old days that were called flagellites. They 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 beat themselves, you know. They had whips and they right. walked along whipping themselves. Mm -hmm. Martin Luther was <clears throat> walking up the steps on his knees to try to uh, show some kind of penance. And I've been down in South America, one place where they would uh, crawl on their knees to this statue. For, no, there's no amount of sacrifice that you and I can do that'll get you to heaven. It is the sacrifice of Jesus. So the fact that you're sorry or not sorry or more sorry, I mean, it, it, it's an it's a, a exercise in futility. Don't do it. Just say, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I've sinned, and now I want to take his forgiveness, period. Mm, it's so easy that people make it difficult. Oh, yeah, well, everything. Know. Well, they think they've got to earn it. That's yeah. the whole concept. We've got to earn our salvation. We've got to punish ourselves to, to, to uh, be worthy with God. Yeah. You're never going to get worthy. So for, <laughs> don't even try. I'm worthy because Jesus died for me. All right. Amen. Bobby says, if a person is not caught up in the rapture, will there be another chance to be saved and go to heaven? I need the right words to say to my ex-husband whose heart is hardened so that he will hopefully consider listening to me. I still love this man, and I want him to know what real joy and happiness he can feel when trusting the Lord. Well, um, when the Lord comes back, He's going to come back to take those who belong to him. And uh, he will, they will be caught up together with him in the, in the air. Uh, look, here's the deal. According to the Bible, you will answer for the deeds that you have done in the flesh. You know? And... If you come to Jesus Christ, you can be forgiven of the deeds you have done in the flesh because he will pardon you. But if you have not accepted him as Savior, you must give an account, cold turkey, for what you've done. Mm -hmm. And that's called the judgment seat of God, the great white throne of judgment. And it's going to be horrible because most everybody at that great white throne is going to be thrown into hell. And it'll be a torment forever. That's what the Bible says. It's horrible to think of. God's offering us pardon. So if your husband wants to play games and I don't believe in all that religious mumbo jumbo, well, okay, that's fine. Uh, just wait, wait till the great white throne comes and, and you've got to give account for everything you've done from the moment you were born until the moment you die for every act. See what happens. All right. All right, Olivia writes in, I have to agree with you, Pat, on the subject, subject of why would any girl want to join an extremely aggressive level of the military? As a stay-at-home mom of two little girls, I get nervous when I hear about things about women being drafted in the, in the future. 
what is wrong with girls being raised just to embrace <laughs> the women Christ intended us to be? Why can't a girl say combat would be too much for her? Well, she can and should. God has prepared you to be a nurturing mother, to be a wife, to be a helpmate. That's your role. So do that. He didn't make you to wear combat boots and carry an M16 and sh shoot down the enemy. Uh, it doesn't hurt if you learn how. I mean, I would be happy to have my daughters learn how to shoot uh, guns. You, all the girls in Israel have to go and they yeah. carry the big M16s. And Oh, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, I, I know some stories about that, too, that I can't say on television. But any of it, I don't think. But, see, why can't women embrace the role of wife and mother? Why not? You, I mean, raising the next generation is a very important function. If all the women are Amazons and they're out with muscles and M16s fighting, who's going to take care of the kids? Somebody's got to take care of the next generation. They've got to teach them, train them, nurture them. Don't, don't despise your calling. Well, we leave you with today's Power Minute from Matthew 6. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you.